If you made the mistake of thinking winter was over, try again. And good morning, it is the Texas Weather Roundup for Monday, the 13th of March, 2023. I'm Texas Storm Chasers David Reimer. I hope y'all had a good weekend. Some of y'all did have some wind and hail Saturday evening, but for the most part, we were able to keep all the rowdy storms off to the northeast in Oklahoma and Arkansas. That will not be the case later this week, but we've got a lot to talk about. First, chance for some lighter rain tonight and tomorrow across parts of the state. A little bit of a break on wind. Wednesday before we deal with more widespread precipitation, including the chance for stronger thunderstorms and a big cool down Thursday, Friday, into the weekend and next week. Let's just get on into it. Here are the latest chances for precipitation. This is going to be for tonight. Again, while the rain map may look cute, the overall precipitation intensity is going to be quite light. We've got a layer of dry air, especially across the northern half of Texas up into the panhandle, that'll really be inhibiting a lot of the precipitation from reaching the surface tonight. So while the radar may look like it's pouring and storming, uh, we're probably only going to get some light rain out of activity tonight and into tomorrow. Speaking of which, here is the forecast precipitation chances for Tuesday across the state. Again, the potential for some scattered showers, maybe a thunderstorm, but not really expecting any sort of rowdy thunderstorms tomorrow and tomorrow afternoon across the eastern three-fourths of Texas. And again, not really expecting anything to get too, too heavy. Uh... As we look ahead, here's the global forecast system. This is for surface dew points as we head into Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Now, specifically, uh, I know there's a lot of dry air looking stuff here, but what I want you to look at is the influx of moisture-rich air coming on in from the Gulf of Mexico on Thursday. Kind of lines up in a north-south orientation. That's going to be our dry line. And then we're going to head into Thursday night and Friday. You'll see how that kind of starts to sag more like a southwest-northeast sort of transition that's your cold front and you'll notice that cold front is going to push the tropical moisture out of the state out into the gulf of mexico later this week now that's just just one element of many i could show you but key story is we're going to have a dry line set up Thursday afternoon with an upper-level storm system taking shape of the plains. And then as that storm system departs Thursday night into Friday morning, we're going to see a cold front, a pretty strong one at that, push south all the way through all of Texas. And that's going to bring much cooler temperatures for the weekend. Now, in terms of forecast rain totals with the event tonight, tomorrow, and then later this week... We're generally looking at a pretty good precipitation event across the eastern half of Texas. Now for tonight and tomorrow, light rain, the potential for a tenth to a quarter inch of rain across parts of the Panhandle, down into western north Texas, the hill country, parts of south Texas. Most of what you see on this map is not going to fall tonight or tomorrow. That is going to be for the Thursday-Friday storm system, where we could see a boatload of showers and thunderstorms, a boatload, get it, <laughs> uh, across the eastern half of Texas, with the highest probability for one to three inches of rain across the eastern third of Texas, which could result in some flooding problems as we get into Thursday night and Friday. But you know what? <laughs> Guess what? It's March. If we have a dynamic storm system visiting the state in March, you got it. If you guess severe weather, you got it right. And we do now have a risk of severe weather on Thursday. Models are starting to trend a little bit up in the instability department. Uh, at this point, the Storm Prediction Center has issued one of their extended range outlooks. That doesn't include any level ones four or five risk you could have a level two or level three risk and at this point we do have a level two risk across much of north texas parts of central texas the brazos valley into east texas the piney woods of east texas and northeast texas and at this point all that means is hey heads up Severe storms are possible Thursday afternoon and Thursday evening. I won't get into the nitty-gritty details, try to pin down specific times, specific threats, but at this point, it looks like large hail, damaging winds, maybe a tornado possible with activity Thursday into Thursday night. Again, we're probably going to have a lot of showers and storms, but that doesn't mean all of those storms are going to be producing hail, damaging winds, etc. 
as we head into Friday morning, the threat will transition over to heavy rainfall as Crash of the Cold Front barrels through Texas. And again, what we're expecting here, we're going to have plenty of wind shear in the mid-levels and aloft that will support organized thunderstorm development, allow thunderstorms to become longer-lived and organized. What is uncertain at this point is the amount of instability available. Uh, as you saw in that previous graphic, we're going to have plenty of moisture, but widespread rain, lots of cloud cover, that's going to put a damper on the instability on Thursday, or how unstable the atmosphere can become. And in the mid-levels of the atmosphere, another ingredient we need for instability, generally speaking, is a temperature gradient between the surface or the low levels of the atmosphere up into the mid and upper level levels. Let's try that again, mid and upper levels. See, this is what happens. I get tongue-tied. And we're not going to see a super strong gradient. You know, the mid and upper levels aren't going to be super cold with this system on Thursday. If they were, that would allow for an increase in lapse rates or the difference between temperatures at, say, 3,000 feet above the surface and 10,000 feet above the surface. And that increase in temperature gradient would allow for more instability to develop. Now, instability is trending a bit up. We're still going to have plenty of wind shear, so we're going to keep an eye on it. And again, it's four days out, but again, some severe storms possible on Thursday afternoon, Thursday night, with widespread shower and thunderstorm activity. All that will be moving out on Friday, and guess what? Like I said previously, if you thought winter was over, here's a little hint from someone who's lived in Texas for a while, and most Texans who have lived in the state for a while know this. You don't really expect the last freeze of the season until Easter. It doesn't matter when Easter is. There's always going to be a freeze near Easter in the state of Texas. And guess what? A pretty cold air mass is going to come pay, pay us a visit over the weekend early next week with below average temperatures looking likely. I mean, if you really want the nitty gritty, some models are showing snow. Now, nah, I don't think that's going to happen, but the potential for freezing temperatures does exist. We're taking a probabilistic approach at this point. This is using National Weather Service data, the national blend of models that generates probabilities for, in this case, temperatures below 32 degrees Fahrenheit. This is for Saturday morning, the 18th of March. You can see pretty slam dunk chance we're going to have a freeze across the panhandle, northwest Texas down the big country and again these are for the airport so again obviously temperatures can vary substantially over a short distance between an urban environment a rural environment a valley or on top of a hill so again a one in three chance give or take for a freeze sunday excuse me saturday morning in austin about a one in five chance at dfw international airport but let's be honest it's probably closer to one in three just outside the cities uh 89 percent in Lubbock, you know, Permian Basin all the way into the Concho Valley, etc. Waco, there's even a 9% chance by Saturday morning temperatures will be below freezing in Victoria. Oh, guess what? You think I was done? No, sorry, Bob. We like our statistics here in Weather Nerdland. And guess what? Here's Sunday. Pretty much slam dunk across the panhandle. Pretty much a slam dunk across West Texas. You'll note the probabilities across DFW increase up towards 25% at the big airport, which means it's probably closer to 35% just outside the airport. About a 2 and 3 chance at Wichita Falls, Abilene, give or take half and half, Austin up to 40%, etc. And then here is Monday morning. Again, still pretty substantial probabilities. And again, as we get closer to this event, I wouldn't be shocked if these probabilities go up. The longer range weather model guidance, especially when you're dealing with a blend of data, which this does, this incorporates dozens of different uh, weather model products, they tend to underestimate the strength of some of our cold air intrusions. So if it really is as potent as some data suggests, it's probably, we're probably going to be trending the temperature forecast down over the weekend into early next week, which, I mean, the good news is at least we'd have a break from the severe thunderstorm department. But the bad news is those of you who have planted plants, you're going to want to go ahead and start uh, keeping an eye on the forecasts as we head into the weekend into early next week with multiple nights below freezing, definitely possible. Now let's take a look at the high temperature forecast over the next few days across Texas. And again, this is today. Uh, we're still going to have a bit of a cool air mast entrenched in the eastern Texas panhandle. Maybe some showery activity. Honestly, can't rule out a few snowflakes with some colder air aloft. But again, generally across the northern third of Texas, seasonal for February, early March. A little cool for mid-March. Uh, 
lower to mid 40s all the way up to about 60 degrees by the time you get down to interstate 20 across the southern half of texas we're looking at 70s which sure beats the 90s we had a couple days ago before crashy the cool front came to visit as we head to tuesday with those rain chances increased cloud cover we're still going to see temperatures in the 50s across most of the panhandle down into northwest texas north texas northeast texas so it's not going to be a pretty day it's going to be a chilly day a good day for a sweater or light jacket outside of the rain chances and into south texas where we still have rain chances but more tropical moisture high temperatures in the 60s and 70s nothing outrageously hot showing up yet oh wait here we go here's wednesday we're going to start the temperature climb up the roller coaster with temperatures rebounding up into the 70s and some 80s across texas especially down in the permian basin you can see near pecos looks like trying to be the warm spot of the day by wednesday across the state we'll see how warm they end up becoming and then here's Thursday. You can see hints of our cool front starting to push south with temperatures making it up into the 50s on Thursday in the panhandle. But this might be a day where temperatures are warmest in the morning before crashing behind that cool front in the afternoon hours Thursday. But again, the rest of Texas, 70s, 80s, and the 90s across South Texas. And again, this will probably be a day where we're going to be keeping an eye out for a few severe storms with many more storms and showers likely across the eastern half of Texas. And then here's Friday. You can see crashy the cool front definitely coming on in temperatures on friday not getting out of the 40s and 50s across the northern 75 percent of texas and again this will be a day where temperatures likely peak in the morning hours or right before crashy the cold front hits your location and then we're going to have strong north winds and falling temperatures through the day i would suspect friday evening is going to be quite chilly across several regions of Texas, and that'll continue into the weekend and early next week. Although the good news is at least we are in March now, so the angle of the sun is higher. It's not as easy for us to get the Arctic outbreaks down south, or at least well, even if we do, it's not as uh, easy for them to last very long. And we still usually are able to warm up during the daytime hours, if not, you know, for cold nights. So lots to talk about this week, but hey, you know what? I'm only 32. Why would I have any hair left anyway? So we'll keep an eye on things. We'll have the next Texas Weather Roundup out on the Texas Weather Center YouTube channel by 6 a.m. We're going to be trying to push it out a bit later on Facebook just because the algorithm hates us. So you know what? We're just going to play around with it. We'll see what works best. That's what life is, an experimentation and surviving. Anyway, we'll be here. Thanks for just tuning in. Y'all have a great Monday and God bless.